Vitamin C is one of the most well-known, if not the most well-known vitamin out there. It exists naturally in foods, and in this video, I want to talk about what vitamin C is, its roles in the body, and how to get enough of it, which means we will talk about vitamin C supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what vitamin C is and why we need it. Vitamin C is an essential nutrient, meaning we need to get it from food and cannot produce it ourselves. This is interesting because most animals have a gene that allows them to make their own vitamin C. So we as humans are actually a biological anomaly in this regard. Also, vitamin C is water soluble, meaning it doesn't accumulate in the fat tissue and any excess is normally peed out. The RDA for vitamin C for adult women is 75 milligrams per day, and for adult men, it's 90 milligrams per day. Just as a side note, I personally believe this value to be too low, but more on that later. Let's now talk about the main functions of vitamin C. First is immune function. This is probably the most well-known benefit. Vitamin C is a potent antioxidant, meaning it lowers the inflammatory effect of free radicals from things such as infections, toxins, or pollution. It also stimulates the activity of white blood cells, which help fight off unwanted invaders in the body. Interestingly, vitamin C deficiencies are also associated with many lifestyle-related diseases, as it is one of the first nutrients to be depleted in alcoholics, smokers, and obese people. Next is skin health and wound healing. This is something not many people are aware of, but vitamin C helps the body produce collagen, which is a protein important for the structure and function of skin. That's why sufficient vitamin C levels need to be present in your skin, muscle, and other tissues to allow for healthy functioning and proper wound healing. For example, gum disease and receding gums are often a result of vitamin C depletion in the tissue around the gums. And third, we have adrenal health. Your adrenals require a lot of vitamin C to combat stress, and when you're healthy and rested, they will also be one of the organs with the highest vitamin C reserves. In fact, an age-old protection against scurvy that indigenous people of the Americas used was to eat the adrenal glands of the game they hunted. It worked exactly because of this high concentration of vitamin C in the adrenal tissue. That's also why a high vitamin C intake is important for anyone suffering from chronic fatigue and adrenal burnout. But more on this in the supplementation part of the video. Before we get there, let's first discuss the best vitamin C foods. In general, fruits and vegetables should be your go-to option. While most people recommend citrus fruits, which are a good source, there are foods with a higher vitamin C concentration per 100 gram. Here's a list of good options. For example, we have Camu Camu, Acerola berries, bell peppers, guava, strawberries, oranges, lemons, and tomatoes. Okay, on to the last part of this video, supplementation. Vitamin C supplementation is a complex topic because even though most people regularly do it, there are a few things you need to know before getting started. First, the supplement form. In general, you have two options when wanting to supplement, synthetic and natural vitamin C supplements. Let's begin with synthetic supplements. Nearly all of them are made from ascorbic acid, which is often used synonymously with vitamin C. I will tell you why this can be misleading in a second. The usual process of producing ascorbic acid is called the Reichstein process, where you take cornstarch and break it down with heat, enzymes, acetone, and hydrochloric acid. The process is well understood and allows manufacturers to create very high potency supplements. The resulting ascorbic acid is, as the name suggests, acidic, which is why you will often find it in buffered versions where it is bound to certain alkalizing minerals, such as magnesium or calcium. There are also liposomal versions of ascorbic acid where the vitamin C is contained within a liposome. These liposomes are very small fat molecules that mimic the cell membranes of the body, and any supplement inside of them will be more easily digested by the body. So with this in mind, the benefits of synthetic supplements are 
that they're cheap and widely available, that they allow for high potency, and that they come in different forms, such as buffered and liposomal vitamin C. There are, however, also drawbacks to synthetic vitamin C supplements. The first and most important is that even though vitamin C is defined as ascorbic acid in basically every chemistry textbook out there, this only tells you half the story. You see, when you consume vitamin C from natural sources, it comes together with a bunch of other phytonutrients that the body also needs, such as tyrosinase, bioflavonoids, and more. When you take ascorbic acid alone, it can lead to your body scavenging all of these other cofactors from the tissues and organs. This is why over the last couple of years, natural vitamin C supplements have gained in popularity. Natural supplements are usually made of extracts of foods high in vitamin C. For example, acerola extract, which is sometimes freeze-dried, is a very common supplement. Sometimes other berries are used as well, but the process is usually the same. The benefits of natural vitamin C supplements are that you're getting the real nutrient along with all of its natural cofactors, that the supplements are usually easier on the GI tract. This is especially helpful for people who get stomach upset from synthetic vitamin C, and that smaller doses seem to be required to get the same effect. This is probably because the body can more easily assimilate the natural vitamin C. The cons of natural vitamin C supplements are First, that they're more expensive. Next, that supplements usually reach only small dosages. Like I said before, this usually isn't a problem because smaller doses of natural vitamin C supplements seem to have the same effect as higher synthetic supplements. However, if you wanted to superdose vitamin C, which I don't recommend by the way, you would need to go with the synthetic supplement. And lastly, pesticides and toxin exposure can be a problem since the manufacturer will use real berries for the supplement production. That's why I generally recommend you only buy from reputable brands that lab test each batch of the raw materials for their products. Okay, with these pros and cons of both synthetic and natural vitamin C supplements in front of us, which should you choose? How much should you take? And should you even supplement in the first place? I personally believe the current RDA is too low for both men and women. Less than 100 mg is really the bare minimum to avoid scurvy, but vitamin C is required for much more than just that. So most people should make sure to eat more quality veggies and fruits before supplementing. This is really common sense and will already boost your intake by quite a bit. Whether or not you then need an additional supplement depends on the individual. Generally, people with a slow metabolism and weak adrenals should supplement vitamin C since it's so important for the adrenal glands. For them, a low dose of 200 to 500 milligrams is usually a good start. I personally did better when switching from a synthetic to a natural vitamin C supplement. However, there are cases when synthetic supplements also work. So you kind of have to try for yourself and see if you notice a difference. Generally, people with a copper bioavailability problem will do better with a natural supplement because the tyrosinase in it is essential for ceruloplasmin production, which is the copper binding protein. Lastly, and I said this before, I don't recommend superdosing vitamin C. While it is technically true that water-soluble vitamins don't accumulate in the body, they still interact with other nutrients, and too much of a single nutrient can upset the natural balance of your body. A higher than necessary vitamin C intake will drive up the sodium in your body, for example, which can create a bunch of biochemical problems in the long run. Very high amounts of synthetic vitamin C, which you would have to take to superdose, also reduce ceruloplasmin, which most people already have too little of. So in general, I would advise against taking more than 1000 milligrams per day, unless it's for a very short time. To wrap up this video and summarize the most important learnings, vitamin C is an important vitamin and needs to be consumed regularly. It plays an important role in your immune system, wound healing, and adrenal health. If you decide to supplement, start with a low dose and see how your body reacts to it. Always be careful of high doses of synthetic ascorbic acid and make sure to keep an eye on your other essential nutrients when taking vitamin C.